And I'm glad I've got my listeners back with me. We're at chapter 29, verse 28 of the book of Second Chronicles. And all the congregation worshipped, and the singers sang, and the trumpeters sounded. And all this continued until the burnt offering was finished. And when they had made an end of offering, the king and all who were present with him bowed themselves and worshipped. Moreover, Hezekiah the king and the princes commanded the Levites to sing praises unto the Lord with the words of David and of Asaph the seer. And they sang praises with gladness, and they bowed their heads and worshipped. Notes. Now, whenever we're talking about the words of David and of Asaph the seer, we're talking about the book of Psalms, which wasn't actually completed in the form that we have it now. It has many, many altars, dozens of them, probably. But anyways, what they had is what they were working with. Verse 31. Then Hezekiah answered and said, Now you have consecrated yourselves unto the Lord. Come near and bring sacrifices and meat offerings into the house of the Lord. And the congregation brought in sacrifices and thanks offerings. And as many as were of the free heart burnt offerings. Verse 32, And the number of the burnt offerings which the congregation brought was three score and ten bullocks, and hundred rams, and two hundred lambs. All these were for a burnt offering to the Lord. And the consecrated things were six hundred oxen and three thousand sheep. All of them dedicated to the Lord. That's my notes, by the way. Verse 34, but the priests were so few so that they could not flay all the burnt offerings. Notes. Now that word flay right there, uh, well it should actually, in modern uh, language, you sh it should actually read prepare properly uh, so that they could not prepare properly all the burnt offerings. Okay. Wherefore, their brethren, the Levites, did help them till the work was ended. And until the other priests had sanctified themselves, for the Levites were more upright in heart to sanctify themselves than the priests. Notes. Uh, documented by the Holy Spirit, by the way, they went about these duties with a greater consecration. I guess you could almost say uh, greater conviction. Verse 35. And also the burnt offerings were in abundance with the fat of the peace offerings and the drink offerings for every burnt offering. Notes. Well, this is talking about grape juice poured out on the altar and it signified Christ pouring out his life on the cross. Scripture. So the service of the house of the Lord was set in order and Hezekiah rejoiced and all the people that God had prepared the people. For the thing was done suddenly. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 7. And now we're at chapter 30. <clears throat> I've got to clear my throat there. Doing a lot of reading. And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover until the day of the Lord God of Israel. Notes. Well, this is talking about Passover, and it's a type of Calvary. Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. Okay, Verse 2. For the king had taken counsel, and the princes, and all the congregation in Jerusalem, to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep it at that time, because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently, neither had the people gathered themselves together at Jerusalem. Notes. <clears throat> now, if you remember, the Passover was supposed to be kept the very first month. That's Exodus chapter 12, verses 2 through 3. But because of all the things that needed to be done, they would have to take the Passover a month late. Uh, funny thing is, is that sin does kind of cause delays. You can find that right there in verse 2. I just read it. Verse 4. And the thing pleased the king and all the congregation. So they established a decree to make pro proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba even unto Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem, 
for they had not done it of a long time in such sort as it is written. <clears throat> Notes. Uh, well, in the multitude of an undivided and holy kingdom, it's it's been a while since they've actually done this. So uh, you can say they got kind of rusty. Okay, verse six. So the messengers. Some people will have the word post right there, but it says so the messengers went with the letters from the king and all his princes throughout all Israel and Judah. And according to the commandment of the king, saying, You children of Israel, turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he will return to the remnant of you that you escaped, that, that are escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. <coughs> Notes. Oh boy, my voice is really starting to go out. But anyways, you have to keep in mind the northern kingdom had by now pretty much fallen. And so the poorest of the poor had been left by Assyria in the land with the elite taken out as captives. However, they were precious in God's sight just the same. Well, regrettably, as we shall see, most would not take this opportunity offered by the very, very kind and brilliant Hezekiah. Verse 7. <coughs> And do not be like your fathers and like your brethren which trespassed against the Lord God of their fathers, who therefore gave them up to desolation as you see. Notes. Well, in other words, he's saying these problems are very, very obvious. The desolation of the northern kingdom could easily be seen. And it's God who's allowed these things to happen. Verse 8. <coughs> Now be not stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves unto the Lord, and enter into his sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever. And serve the Lord your God, that the fierceness of his wrath may be turned away from you. Notes. Now, let it ever be known that the only thing that stops the wrath of God is Calvary. His wrath will either be turned toward the unrepentant believer or Calvary. Uh, the price of sin must be paid either way. If we accept the price that he paid at Calvary, then his wrath has already been expended towards his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. If we do not accept the price that was paid on Calvary, then we pay the price, and a very heavy one at that. Turning the page... <coughs> Verse 9. For if you turn again unto the Lord your brethren... Or, let me read that. Let me read it again. For if you turn again unto the Lord your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that lead them captive, so that they, will, so that they shall come again unto the Lord. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if you return unto him. Notes. In other words, you better sincerely repent. Hezekiah speaks of a possible restoration, but only if repentance is uh, uh, forthcoming and immediate. Verse 10. So the messengers passed from city to city throughout the country of Ephraim and Manasseh, even unto Zebulun. But they laughed them to scorn, and they mocked them. Oh, stupid, stupid. Notes. Uh, these last two phrases speak a significant description of the exact moral state in which Israel's tribes were now to be found. Sadly, far too many in the modern church meet the message of the cross with laughter, scorn, and mockery. And boy, are they going to pay for it. Verse 11. Nevertheless, diver uh, nevertheless diverse of Asher and Manasseh and of Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. Notes. Well, while many will look and laugh and mock, many as well will accept and receive. Far fewer, though. It is to the latter that we look. And we must pick up in chapter 30, verse 12 of Second Chronicles. Thank you, and God bless. I'll see you later.